Hi guys, Des from Fundrex back again, and today I have Mr. Aiden Healy from Unplug. Welcome, Aiden. Hi, Des. How are you? So, Unplug, what do you do, and what does your company do? Sure. So, I'm the head of learning and development at Unplug, yep. um, and our organisation really looks at how individuals and uh, companies use technology on a day-to-day -day basis. And I suppose a lot of the clients we work with they kind of have this paradox with their tech usage that more and more tech has come into our lives and that's brought a lot of good things, but also brought a range of challenges and frustrations as well. So we're really looking at those challenges and frustrations and what we can do about it. Cool, okay, because um, when I started in funds, I started uh, late 90s and uh, in the fund space, well, the, you didn't have the social media side of things for sure, but even up until recently when I came out of it, people were definitely, uh, like we're all using social media, but, there was no real kind of guidance rules or any of that kind of stuff. So are you seeing that that, that is now what's coming to play and that's what you guys are, are focusing on is kind of helping companies and individuals set up their stall to use social media responsibly, properly? All the above. Yeah, I mean, when you think about organizational culture, it's often something that develops and changes kind of beneath the surface, mm -hmm. you know. And when you look at smartphones coming into the workplace, um, a lot of workplace communication now has moved from email into more social channels like Slack and yeah, Yammer yeah. and SharePoint. Yep. But I, I think a lot of organizations have never actually had the conversation about what does that mean to us or how do we communicate you know we often make a joke that in the past if you wanted to finish work you left the office because it was hard for work to follow you home very true now with the smartphone in a way your work day never ends yep. you can be working all day all night if you want to do so because one interesting point on that and some i'm not sure it was a french company uh, but they introduced a policy whereby it was actually illegal for the company to expect employees to answer work emails out of hours. Is that the kind of stuff that you're seeing happen in Volver? Yeah, so for example, France have introduced a law called the right to disconnect. And oh. what that means is that companies that have over 50 employees must have a conversation with their employees around their tech usage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that employees, you know, can't work flexibly or can't answer emails in the evening, but a company cannot say to employees, I expect you to be online 24 seven, or I expect you to be constantly connected. Because where that was coming back in France is their healthcare system, the costs of stress, burnout, exhaustion, yeah, yeah. lack of sleep, and so on and so forth. Okay, like, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, so that's on the, the, the disconnecting side of it. When they are actually connecting, uh, what kind of guidance do you give, or what are you seeing people in terms of what, what, what are they doing well and what are they doing not so well when it comes to using, even, let's, say, let's start with smartphones because social media kind of is living on those. Sure, I, I think um, for a lot of it, you know, particularly when we're in work, most people want to go into work, do a good day's work, and really focus on the things that are most important to them yep. or adds most value to the organization. And I think with tech, we hear that word focus a lot. You know, many of us now we're working, we have multiple screens, multiple devices, a lot of multitasking, a lot of notifications, a lot of interruptions. Yep. So I think what we're seeing really is companies going, how do we give employees the space and time to do their best work? I think yep. all of us can kind of relate to the open plan office, constant noise, constant yep. interruption. And our days feel more and more like we're just jumping around between lots of different things. Yeah. So I, I, I think what we're seeing companies do is actually helping employees find some quiet time, either by helping them turn off their tech, reduce down notification settings, yeah. reconfigure the technology, or actually just creating spaces where they can go for f a few hours and do deeper work and not be interrupted. Very good. I mean, even things like, I suppose, um, and something, uh, that I would have done when I was in meetings, particularly it was actually when I was in the States because people loved that they cooked their blackberries, we called them crackberries back then. And this has gone sure, back absolutely. 10, 15 years ago. Um, but simply even asking people to switch off the device when you're trying to teach them something or have a proper meeting was, was a challenge. Um, but I actually think people, in my own view, is that they're actually welcome this kind of bit of silence where actually you have to switch stuff off and actually have a bit of headspace to, to get on and, and do some work. Okay, cool. So um, and what kind of social media um, trends are you seeing in terms of, like, what is of most of interest that you're seeing people uh, continuously accessing? Like, is it the likes of Facebook at work? Is it is it a mix or, you know, what are you seeing uh, society 
going towards on the social media platforms? Yeah, I mean, I, The Economist actually came out with a piece quite recently about their predictions for 2018. All right, cool. And they said one of their predictions in 2018 is that there would be almost like a tech lash. They almost yeah. described our relationship with social media kind of saying, you know, the romance is over. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, when you get a new partner and you think they're wonderful and everything is amazing about them yeah, and you yeah. can't get enough of them. <laughs> and then kind of a few months or maybe a year or two into the relationship, the honeymoon period is the over. Honeymoon period is over. Yeah. So I, I think what we're seeing with social media is we, you know, a lot of us have jumped on it. We thought it was great. But not a lot of us actually get a lot of value from it anymore. Yeah. And so many of our clients that we speak to, they say, I spend an hour a day on Facebook or an hour a day on Instagram, yep. but it doesn't, you know, make me a more informed, more right. educated, more well-rounded person. Yeah. And there's starting to be a pushback on those platforms. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I definitely would agree with that. And even people I was speaking to recently, um, I was asking one guy, Andrew White from Fund Apps. I said, you know, Andrew, you know, what's what's the one piece of tech that you could do without? And he said, Facebook. I've I've gave it up, you know, a couple of years ago, and it's the best decision I ever made. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that's for everyone, but he said it just gave him an awful lot more headspace to maybe try and do something different with his time or whatever. Yeah, and Mark Zuckerberg even came out and he said one of his goals for 2018 is not just looking at the amount of time people spend on Facebook, because when you think about it, so much of our kind of internet metrics is time on site, number of clicks, engagement. Yeah. He said he wants to make sure that time on Facebook is time well spent. Yeah. And I think really the future of these social media platforms is not going to be how much they can grab our attention or how much they can suck us in. Yeah. It's almost like looking at is that time time well spent yeah, it it. one thing i do want to talk to you about because we had a chat uh, just before we, we, we sat down here is you guys are doing some work in schools too mm -hmm. that's really cool because uh, as a parent uh, i think and anna uh, i would consider myself uh, tech savvy i would still be terrified of the use of um technology with children you know where you know, they might not know what they're doing or how they're doing and how to actually help them with that. So that's stuff that you guys are, are currently looking at, correct? Yeah, and, and what we're seeing a lot from the research is, is that this is having a bigger impact on young people in terms of how they regulate their own tech usage. And when yep. you think about most people of our age, we have grown up in a time without the smartphone, yep. without social media. So we know what life is like without it. Yep. You know, a child born today, they're growing up and thinking, oh, well, this is the way the world is. Everybody yeah. looks at their phone on the bus. That's just the natural thing to Very do. True. You Kid, know, kids are sitting there having their dinner and they're looking at their smartphone. I'm guilty of that as well, you know. Mm. And, it's, it's, and, and I suppose, you know, particularly a young person's mind hasn't developed some of that self-control yeah. and self-regulation that an adult mind has. And if they are constantly exposed to social media or the mm -hmm. internet or the kind of, you know, very short term, immediate, pleasurable hits that yeah. you often get with technology, it can be quite hard then for them to regulate yes. other sitting down to do good study, exactly. their own stress management. And as well, if you're living in a social media world yeah. all the time, particularly as a teenager, yeah. that's a lot of challenge when you're comparing yourself to others and trying to form your own right. identity. I would agree with that. And, and I think one thing that they get from the likes of tablet use and, and, and all that kind of stuff is instant gratification. You know, in, in games that they play, um, you'd see that the rewards are quick and fast and yeah. frequent. And, you know, kids love that. But life isn't like that. You know, it's a long waiting game for a lot of things, good mm. things to happen. But, uh, yeah. And not just in mobile gaming, yep. but even, you know, you look at an example like Tinder now. You know, if you want to go on a date, yep. you don't have to go up to a bar and say hello to yep. someone. You download the app and just swipe, swipe, swipe. And, yep. and what does that do to someone who then, you know, might join a more serious relationship yep. and experience the highs and lows and the challenges of yeah, that, you yeah. know? So I, I think there's a lot of ways this is impacting the next generation who almost don't know a world without it. Yeah, that's no, very true. I, I do know some organizations do an actual Tinder hour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's for a, another conversation. But this, for now, I love what you guys are doing. I think thank you, you very much for coming in and seeing us today. Really appreciate it. My Cheers. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.